Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here to talk to you about tangent planes, planes that are tangent to our graphs in three-dimensional space. Here I have a circular paraboloid. My function of x and y is x squared plus y squared, one of our most basic equations for paraboloids. So let's say we want to find an equation for a plane that is tangent through a point on the paraboloid. Obviously, I think sometimes in some functions you're going to have characteristics of the function that are so basic that you'll just be able to tell by looking at it. So for example, example, if we were trying to take a plane that is tangent to the very bottom point on my parabola here that goes to the origin, then we could probably tell that the plane is just the xy plane, in other words, z equals zero. Let's say that we want to find a plane that is tangent to our function, to our circular paraboloid, at a different point. Let's say like negative one, negative one, positive two. We want to find the equation of this tangent plane. So it's not easy. We can't just do it by sight anymore. What we'll need to do is come up with a general procedure that allows us to find a plane that is tangent to our function at any point we would like. If you think about the general equation of what a plane looks like, we will have ax plus by plus cz equals d, or we may do our equation for the plane as a translation from the origin, where we still have a, b, and c as our coefficients, but we are just doing translation by some point x0, y0, and z0. So if we want to know the equation of a tangent plane, we'll just require two things. We'll need a point, and we'll need a normal vector, and we're going to call our normal vector a, b, c here. Remember that our normal vector will be our coefficient for our plane in three-dimensional space. Well, we'll already have some sort of a point that we have decided that we want to find the plane tangent to that point on our function. So we assume that we already have the point. We really will just simply need our normal vector. So we'll just need our vector a comma b comma c. So the question is, how do I find this normal vector once I've chosen a point that I want to find a plane tangent to that point on the graph? Well, the idea, I think, is that we need to find a normal vector, in other words, a vector that sticks straight out of the graph of our function here. And the way we're going to think through that is to go back to the ideas that we covered recently of level curves and our gradient. Now remember that the level curves are just the shapes that we get from cutting through the graph of our f of x, y horizontally at different z values. So if you think about we have z equals x squared plus y squared, if I plug in different values for z, then that's just going to give me that x squared plus y squared equals some number, and those will be circles centered at the origin. If you think about our gradient, remember del f, and we get its components from partial derivatives, so remember, del f is going to point in the direction of greatest increase. And if you think about our level curves, as we go higher and higher slicing through our paraboloid, the circular sections that we get are going to be farther out. So our gradient, in this case, is pointing farther out. And remember that the gradient not only points in the direction of greatest increase, but it also is normal to these level curves as it points outward. So to find this idea of normal with a gradient, we're going to take it up one dimension. So we have our circular paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared. This is a two-dimensional surface inside three-dimensional space. What I could do is rearrange this equation here and move everything to one side so that we have z minus x squared minus y squared equal to zero. Now what this looks like, even though we haven't really changed anything at all, what this looks like is a left-hand side that has three variables, x, y, and z, equal to some number. And so what this really starts to look like is some sort of a level object, in other words, a level surface of a function of three variables. I have a function of three variables here equal to some number. By setting our function of x, y, and z equal to different constants, then we would get different level surfaces. And then we would simply think gradiently, so to speak, in terms of just an additional dimension. So our del f before that told us the direction of greatest increase if we were on our function above a point in the xy plane. Here now if we take del capital F, which is our function of x and y and z, we will take partial fx comma partial fy comma partial fz in three-dimensional space. That will tell us the direction of greatest increase, treating this as a level surface. And of course, this gradient will be normal to our surface here, to our circular paraboloid. So the main idea here is if we can take the gradient of a function of three variables by thinking of our f, x, y as some capital f, x, y, z, then our gradient will be normal to the surface that we began with at this point, x, zero, y, zero, z, zero. 
That will give us the normal vector that we need, and then we can define our plane with our normal vector being the coefficients for the plane equal to some constant d, like we said before. Okay, now that we can visualize this, let's simply walk through the process. So I have my circular paraboloid. The formula is x squared plus y squared. I think of this as z equals this formula, and then I simply move everything to one side and think of this as a level surface. Technically, it was equal to zero before. So here I want to find the plane tangent to this function at the point negative 1, negative 1, negative 2. So thinking of my lowercase f as a capital F, then we'll look at del of capital F, and if we take the partial derivative with respect to x, we'll get negative 2x. Partial derivative with respect to y, we'll get negative 2y. And partial derivative with respect to z, since we just have 1z, we'll get 1. So our del capital F is negative 2x, negative 2y, comma 1. What we'll need to do then is evaluate it at the point negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, and I get 2, comma 2, comma 1. So this is my normal vector then, 2, my circular paraboloid at this point, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2. We get this normal vector. Well, I then know that my plane needs to be 2x plus 2y plus 1z equals some number based on 2, 2, 1 as my normal vector. Since I also know the point that my plane was tangent to was negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, I should be able to plug this in and get a true statement. It should satisfy this equation right over here. I can then simply solve for d and figure out that d is negative 2. So our equation for the plane here will be 2x plus 2y plus z now equal to negative 2. Let's do a couple more examples here. So we have our function f of xy is equal to the square root of 36 minus x squared minus y squared. And we want to find the plane tangent to our graph at the point 2 comma 4 comma 4. And if you plug this 2 comma 4 comma 4 into the original, you'll see that you get a true statement. So the first thing that we'll want to do is think of this as a function of three variables. So let's go ahead and write this first as z is equal to the square root of 36 minus x squared minus y squared. Then I move this expression over to be with z, so we'll go ahead and say that z minus this square root of 36 minus x squared minus y squared is equal to 0. Now you can see this as a level surface, a function of x, y, and z. So here we'll go ahead and say our capital F function of x, y, and z, where this is a level surface, is z minus the square root of all the stuff, right? 36 minus x squared minus y squared. Once we are here, remember the next thing we'll need to do is take the gradient of this function. So if we take del of capital F, then that's going to be, first of all, partial fx, comma, partial fy, and then partial fc. Let's go ahead and find these. So the partial fx for this will be really located in here because the derivative with respect to x of z is 0. And if we think of this square root all to the 1 half power, then we will have negative 1 half. We will have 36 minus x squared minus y squared. The power would go down by 1 from a half to negative 1 half. And partial derivative with respect to x, the chain rule, we would need to take the derivative with respect to x of the inside, and that would be negative 2x. So here you can see that we get x over the square root of 36 minus x squared minus y squared. We do a similar thing for y, partial fy. We will have a derivative that is 0 for the first term. We'll think of this all to the 1 half again, so we'll get negative 1 half we'll get 36 minus x squared minus y squared, all to the negative 1 half. Chain rule, derivative of the inside with respect to y would give us negative 2y. So our partial derivative with respect to y would then be y over the square root of 36 minus x squared minus y squared. If we do our final derivative, our partial derivative with respect to z, well, there is no z in the second part here, so we really just need to take the derivative of the first term there, and that's going to be 1. So we know that our del capital F is then going to be x over this root and 
and our second component will be y over this root. And our final component will be 1. So this is our capital del F. Now we want our plane tangent to the point 2 comma 4 comma 4. So our del capital F at the point 2 comma 4 comma 4. Now notice we only have places to plug in the x and y. But if I plug in 2 for x and 4 for y, I will get 2 on the top here over 36 minus 4 minus 16. So that will be the square root of 16 down there. We'll get 4. And then here y is 4, and I'll get the same 4 on the bottom I got from the original root. There's nothing to plug in for the third component. We just get 1 here. And so this will actually be 1 half comma 1 comma 1 as our del f at the point 2 comma 4 comma 4. Okay, we know that this will then be our normal vector, so our normal vector is going to be 1 half comma 1 comma 1. So that tells me my plane is going to be of the form 1 half x plus 1 y plus 1 z is equal to some constant d. If we now plug in our point 2, 4, 4 into this, we should get a true statement. So we'll say 1 half times 2 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to d. And here we get 1 plus 4 plus 4, and that would be 9. So our d is equal to 9 here. And then this expression here, if we put in 9 for d, simply becomes 1 half x plus y plus z is equal to 9. If you prefer to get rid of the fraction, you could multiply everything by 2. So you could also say x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 18 if you prefer integers instead. Looking at another example here, we want to find the plane tangent to the ellipsoid x squared plus y squared over 25 plus z squared over 9 equals 1 at this point, negative 3 fifths comma 4 comma 0. Now what you might notice here, sometimes we have a surface and it's not actually written as a function of x and y. In fact, this ellipsoid here is actually already written as a capital F function of x, y, and z equal to 1. So an ellipsoid is actually already a level surface in terms of a function of x, y, and z. So let's just go ahead and write our function. So our function of x, y, and z is certainly x squared plus y squared over 25 plus z squared over 9. And so now we'll just take del capital F, the gradient of our function of three variables. So that will be partial fx, which is 2x, partial fy, which will be 2y over 25, and then partial fz, which will be 2z over 9. So that is our gradient. So we'll evaluate our del capital F at the point negative 3 fifths, 4 comma 0. And that will give us, if we plug in negative 3 fifths for x, we'll get negative 6 over 5. If we plug in 4 for y, we will get 8 over 25. And plugging in 0 for z, we will get 0. That is our normal vector at the point negative 3 fifths comma 4 comma 0. So we now know that our normal vector for the plane is negative 6 fifths 8 over 25 comma 0 and that means that our plane will be negative 6 fifths x plus 8 over 25 y plus no z's is equal to d and then we simply plug in our point and get a true statement to solve for d. So if I plug in negative 3 fifths for x, then that will be 18 over 25. If I plug in 4 for y, that will be 32 over 25 equal to d. Now this is 50 over 25, and so that tells us that d is equal to 2. And so if we take our equation for the plane and put our d in there, then we will get negative 6 over 5x plus 8 over 25y is equal to 2. 
So just to sum up the process of finding a tangent plane. So you have a surface equal to some function of xy. You'll need to change it into the form capital F of xyz equal to zero. If it's like our ellipsoid like we just have, it was already a function of x, y, and z, and so we didn't need to change the form originally, and we could just skip to step number two. Step number two, calculate the gradient of capital F, which is your function of three variable form of whatever your function is. You want to calculate the gradient at the tangent point, so you'll first find del capital F, then you'll plug in your point that you want to be tangent to, into del capital F, that will give you the normal vector. Those will be your coefficients for your plane, so you'll take your normal vector ABC, you put it into your plane, and then you will need to solve for the constant by again plugging your tangent point into your equation for your plane AX plus BY plus CZ equals D. Okay everyone, hopefully this helps you find planes that are tangent to your curves in three-dimensional space. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.